We cannot win an election without community organising. It was an absolute disgrace, the attack that the community organisers uh, were under. Uh, it was a concerted, organised attack uh, against the community organising team yep. uh, at Southside um, shortly after the election and right up till th this, this current day. The community organiser team is a great idea. It's the only way we can get back into these communities who have been deliberately uh, left behind by deliberate political and economic decisions. Uh, and we've got to have people, <coughs> we've got to have community organising in uh, th these regions. What people really didn't understand, we only had 28, we only had 28 community organisers. Do we had every MP saying, well, where was our community organiser? Mm. Well, quite frankly, I wish and I hope in the future we'll have a community organiser in every community. Yeah. But we've just started this project about 18 months ago. And let me tell you, I've never met a community organiser who wasn't the most fantastically dedicated, passionate individual about the party, about the success of the party, and who wasn't prepared to get out, get out there night and day, seven days a week, to try and make sure that we won the election mm. in 2019. They took up the campaigns in, in, in certain areas, you know, like transport, like bus links, like education, poor schools, like the, you know, the, the closure of, of, of factories, the closure of um, decent working places. These people were... What fantastic in bringing communities together in a common cause under the Labour banner. Now, these were, it was essential. Uh, and as you said before, this sort of thing takes years, years, so you can have a demonstrable sort of analysis. But the, the, the critique on community organising has been unfair. It's been uh, an attack from certain individuals. I'll tell you, we cannot win an election without... Yeah building the community organising team and having lots more than 28 community organisers on the field. How else, what better to win back a community than having somebody in that community, speaking to, to people, building the team up there, giving them that trust that they want, giving them respect that they need and you know, turning that into a political advantage for the party. What worries me is that I see it sort of being... Uh, criticised by the right of the party. They don't even know what it is. The same thing happened with Arnie Graff when Ed Miliband brought him over ahead of 2015, community organiser from the US. It was briefed to the Sun, I believe, that he didn't have the right work documentation. Yeah, that's true. And then you think, so this is not just even a Corbyn thing. This is no. just about a certain kind of politics. We don't want that. That's not welcome in the Labour Party. Well, look, I think this goes right to the heart of what we are. And I think, look at... At the beginning of the Labour movement, there were contending ideas about how we should structure ourselves. We ended up with a Fabian structure. It's top-down, hierarchy, command and control. And people think that's how you win elections. But we're not. it's not like we're building an army to fight a war. This is about changing a country uh, in the most dramatic way possible. But as well as that top-down command and control culture, there was also the Guild Socialist movement. There was the Shop Stewards movement. There were ethical socialists. There were you know, people building um, social Sunday schools and lots of other things was going on. All of that gradually was crushed away, deliberately. Now, I've always said, you know, that we cannot succeed in a 21st century age, which is horizontal and networked in character with a 19th century political structure. I mean, hierarchies in a horizontal world, they don't work. I remember when we were told under Ed Miliband, it wasn't Ed, but it was the people who got rid of Arnie Graff who said, we instruct you to make five million conversations between now and the election. They weren't conversations, they were sales calls. People were watching telly, you know, what I receive of, uh, they weren't conversations. It wasn't about building relationships. It wasn't about winning confidence or leading communities. It was a top-down kind of sales uh, salesman or salesperson's call, <clears throat> it don't work. That does not work anymore. So we got to understand if we're going to re tackle laborism, old top-down laborism, 
that we've got to do things differently. And so the philosophy underlying the community organizers, it works with a zeitgeist, 21st century zeitgeist, and it and it probably says from the beginning we should have trusted the, the shop stewards movement and the guild socialists and all those people that were crushed away, the Marxists and the others that were in the party, the Christian socialists, none of them wanted that top-down approach. Mm -hmm.